Yo, what's up guys? Terrell here. Um, it seems like from the last vlog, you guys prefer, for the most part, most of you guys prefer me to do the first impressions on this channel, since I got so much other stuff I need to do for the other channel. So, with all that being said, this is going to be the first impressions, uh, as I mentioned in the manga haul video a, while, uh, a little while ago, I decided to try four new series. Itsuwari Bito, Rosario Plus Vampire, the Gray Man and Neuro Rise of the Yokai Clan. And I decided to start from my favorite to least favorite in terms of first impressions. And so, my favorite of those four that I'm, I'm starting slowly starting to enjoy, and the one I actually bought a second volume of later, it's Uwari Bito. This is my favorite. Out of, out of those four, this is my favorite. And I will go in to explain. For one, the first thing that, that, that to me, and ironically, it's a shonen. Oh, let me see if you can see that. It's a Shonen Sunday release. You wanna know what else is Shonen Sunday? Hot and closer. <laughs> so yeah, this is Super Vito Volume One, and this is Volume Two. Um, and for anyone who wants to know, the character on the other side that is a guy. They're both guys on here. Anyways, um, this is actually a really good uh, series. I'm only gonna talk about the first volume, mind you, because I don't want to spoil anything for the second volume. And the third, and ironically, I found out uh, this this is a very new series for in two ways. For one, it's very new in America. It's, like, ridiculously new. There's only two volumes out in America. And it's new in Japan because it started in 09. And there's only, I believe, seven volumes currently. And I think it's ongoing. So I thought that was a little shocking in itself. But, yeah, like, this is a new series. This is, like, two maybe maybe two years old. It's, it came out in 09, so around two years old. Um, and just to give you a basic plot line of what you're dealing with here. This, for the most part, the premise of the story is essentially you have that character, the main character, the one that looks like Gein, uh, is your main character. And the one thing that drew me to it, the cover, and period, is because, uh, you, most main characters are typical shonen jump. <laughs> Like, it's like, they all have the over-expression looks on them. I mean, everything from fucking Goku to goddamn uh, Natsu. I tried to take the oldest and the newest parallels for Shonen. And, you know, this guy is more of just like, hmm. I mean, he has a Gein face. He looks like Gein from Bleach. I mean, you can tell. I mean, fuck. Look at it. He looks like fucking Gein. He looks like Gein. This is your main character right here. This is your main character. Uh, to, to explain the, pretty much the plot so far, is that essentially the main character's name is Utsu, Utsuo. He lives in a village that only has six adults and is full of freaking orphans, which he is. And essentially these six adults take care of all these orphans. Utsuo is the kind of guy who doesn't really believe in the whole honesty policy. He's not... He's not all about, you know, telling the truth, being ridiculously honest, being honest at all, honestly, not lying, not sneaking off to do other things and shit. But at the heart of it, he's a good guy. But he's not like your typical misunderstood teenager bullshit. No, he, for the most part, he doesn't do bad things. For the most part. I mean, for the most part, he may, like, get out of doing chores and shit, but he never, like, tricks other people to get out of doing chores. He usually just fucking leaves, or lies, and then leaves. That's usually how he rolls. And the thing is, is that to explain how he got this way, it's very simple. When he was younger, it's funny because one of the older, one of the six adults is a monk. And the monk is constantly telling Utsuo that there's nothing wrong with being a, you know, a kind, honest person. Honesty is the way to go. Go honesty, all that other jazz. He's like, fuck that. That's bullshit. And the reason why he has this mindset, it gets explained in a very interesting way. Because essentially, it's kind of like uh, Blue Exorcist in the sense that the father figure character gets killed really early in the damn series. And for this particular one, he dies in like the first fucking chapter, which is really fucked up. But yeah, the father figure dies in like the first chapter. Um, it is explained. The reason why he kept telling him that is because when we find out his backstory, it's the best story is simply, he used to be part of this rich family. His family was rich. He was a small, nice child. And as you can kind of guess, he was he was very uh, truthful, honest. He was kind of a, he was an honest fool. 
is the term that is used a few times in this uh in the in the manga so far. And a couple guys asked him one day when he was this is when he was younger, shit about his house. And so the dude Utsuo ended up giving them all the information. And as you can kind of guess, what essentially happens at this point is he fucking just they they went in there and they killed everybody except him. And he felt like shit and fucking so Jason is messaging me on Facebook, so you're gonna hear beeping occasionally because he always types like twenty things. Yeah, he's typing right now, son of a bitch. Uh you say, oh God, this is gonna annoy the shit out of me now. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, he, he he types I mean wow, he types. No. So anyways, because of that experience, it fucked with him as a person. So his whole philosophy now is to say, fuck the honest route, I'm going the lying route. But to me, he's a mix of soul and gene. I haven't, I'm not huge in the soul leader, but I do know enough of soul personality that he always wants to look cool. That's how Utsuo is. He's a liar and he's a trickster, but he's a guy who always wants to do cool things. And you know what isn't cool? Stealing shit. Well, let me rephrase that. You know what isn't cool? Killing orphans. Because essentially that whole village full of orphans, uh, one of the orphans was actually a leader of a gang who led the game there to get the gold, which ended up slashing, which ends up... And the, I'm not going to go through everything, because I want you to read the goddamn manga volume, since there's only like two out, and I think the third volume comes out later this month, actually. Um, the whole thing is that he ends up, like, cutting... He ends up killing all the children. He kills the rest of the adults, and he kind of slashes the main monk dude. He doesn't die right off, but he, he dies later within that chapter. And it's the first fucking chapter, so it's not that much of a spoiler. And essentially, after this, you have your emotional moment with Utsuo. He goes and takes, he tries, you know, he he, he fights. He, and it's not like he does the bullshit fight like he lies and fights. Well, he does lie and fight, but it's not like in the typical, don't chase after me. And then they won't chase after him and you realize he set off a bomb. It, it's not like that's how the only way he fights. He fights hand to hand too. Like he'll beat the shit out of you if he if he gets the chance. Like if he gets close range, he will kick the shit out of you. Actually, if I can find that real quick, there's a scene where he kicks the shit out of somebody, and I love that fucking scene because that scene was awesome. If I can find it real quick, like he's a dude who's to me he's a dude who comes off as a badass. He's a he's a trickster, and his whole goal is is when his monk father figure character dies, his whole goal is to essentially you know, just do good deeds, but do it through lying and trickery. You know, because, I mean, technically he tells his father, his father, his father figure character, a lie before he dies, and god damn it. Phil Jason's gonna keep messaging me. Uh, and when his father figure dies, Jesus! He, I swear to God, he messages me, like seriously, he writes 20 things at a time, it's crazy. Oh, here it is. This nigga, he fights with lies, but at the same time, he will kick the shit out of you. If he feels like he needs to kick the shit out of you, guess what he's going to do? He's going to kick the shit out of you. I like the way he fights. He fights with a mixture of, he's a, he's a really good liar, he's a really good trickster. That seems like it's such a kitty term, but yeah, he's such a, he's, 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 a, he's a trickster, he's a liar, I forget the other one, it's like a con artist. But all the things he does is for good reasons. I mean, he lies to his father figure because he doesn't tell the father figure that all the orphans are dead. He just he lies to the orphans. He, he tells the orphans that uh, he tell because you know he gets his eyes slashed. That's how he almost dies. He gets his eyes slashed. That's why he doesn't he dies slowly. He gets his eyes slashed. He dies from blood loss actually. And it's like what happens? Like are the children okay? And he's like, all the children are dead. But he's not going to tell him that. So he tells him. You know, they're all fine, they're all fine. And then he dies with a smile on his face, and he's like, lies can help people, you know. I mean, the fucking tagline on the back of it is, can a liar lead a, a life of good? I mean, that's that's the tagline for the series. It's, it's about lying, but doing it in a good way. Also, I just want to say something. I think this is really fucked up. When you get to poop, he's, <laughs> I find this thing, you know what this is? This is a Tanuki. If you're a One Piece fan... This should be really funny to you. Because if anyone knows One Piece, they know that Chopper always got constantly mistaken by other people as a talking Tanuki. 
This is a Tanuki. A raccoon dog. And it can talk, ironically. I thought that was kind of a funny tidbit if you're a fan of One Piece and you or you know of Chopper and his joke. And then you actually run across this is like the first manga I've actually run across where I've seen a fucking Tanuki. Uh so I thought this was pretty funny. You know what Reggie Spit? The ironic thing is Tan this Tanuki right here, he nicknamed he nicknames it Poochie. This dude is really naive. The Tanuki is very naive. Poochie is very fucking naive. And you know what? His the, the chapter he's introduced in explains his backstory because he ends up following Utsuo by the end of it. He got dealt such a bad hand for, for his introduction chapter. Like, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you, you will feel for that character afterwards. It's, it's uh, like, I feel bad. Like, I already know he was, like, supposed to be the marketable character. I can tell that just looking at him. He's supposed to be a marketable character. But God damn it. God damn it, you ain't have to do him like that. Like, you, you'll see what I mean when you watch it, but it's really fucked up. In the scene I show him kicking, he's kicking the dude who caused the pain. You know, you know I'll explain it later. But just, it's bullshit. You, you, you don't do a, a, a fucking tanuki like that, a poochie like that. That was cold. Um, the one thing about the series I would say so far that I've noticed within the first two volumes, it does kind of click into a generic pace. But luckily, it's, it's adding characters and having deeper plots as it goes along. Like, for the second volume, you have this guy, who I believe is Yarmaka, I believe is how you pronounce his name? No, Yakuma. Dr. Yakuma. Sorry. And he, you know, I, I hate these pretty boy characters, but he he also has a very contradicting current personality. Well, he believes in righteousness. He doesn't believe in lying. He, does, he refuses to lie if he can fucking help it. Uh, and he's a doctor. And ironically, the, the the shit he kind of falls into, I'm just gonna explain a little bit. Uh, he he he's bringing this new idea to the world. You know what the new idea is? Surgery. And I haven't seen that actually in retrospect. And it's actually pretty funny because I I got to see the the reactions of people who never heard of surgery before. It's like cutting someone open while they're still alive. That's insane. I don't know why. I thought it was really funny. And in the second volume, you're also introduced to a, the female character during a, an actually pretty interesting arc that has something to do with Poochie because the, the main villain in, in, that, in that particular arc knows Poochie. And we, I don't know why because it ends on a cliffhanger. So I'm, I've already pre-ordered the third volume. I'm trying to remember her name. What do they call her? What do they call her? What do they call it? She, the funny thing is, she's the character who actually tricks Utsuo for the first time. And we find out that Utsuo cannot handle being tricked very well. And I'm trying to find her name real quick, because I don't remember what it is right off the bat. Because I've only seen her a little bit. But I want to find it. Uh, the art style is actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. Now I'm just looking... Real quick. Okay, her name is Naya. Naya. I kept thinking Naysan for something, but it's Naya. The girl's name is Naya. I can't. I would show you a picture, but then again, that's something for you guys to look forward to. But the only problem I see with it is that it, it does have those a lot of plots where it's just like someone's in trouble and he uses lying and his own skills to get him out of it. The nigga can fight. Don't ever just sit here and think, oh, he uses bombs and shit. No, the nigga can fight. He will beat the shit out of you if you get if he if he gets the chance. And I, I kinda like his style of doing things. I don't know. I think this could actually be a pretty good series. And I kinda hope it does get an anime. I think this I think this actually has a better chance of getting anime than not in closer because it isn't as generic. But in terms of first impressions, this is actually a really good This is actually a really good series. And I'm sorry this fucking first impression video has me bitching about Bo Jason messaging me on uh, Facebook and me being kind of off topic a little bit because of being distracted, but you know, all in all, I would suggest getting the first volume. Like, right? read the first volume. The first volume is fucking beast. Um, I'm gonna check to see if Viz Manga has it on, uh, has the first chapter online free. If it does, I will totally link that in the description because I know they're starting to put their mangas on. Actually, let me check that while I'm on here so I know. I don't think so just yet because it's still new. I mean, it's only three volumes. We only have two volumes that are out. Okay, Shonen Sunday. I doubt it's on here already. Because they, they haven't added that much. No, Hot and Closer is on here. 
but not nah, it's why we done. I think it's just because it's too new, but it's cool. Anyways, that is my first impressions of It's a Wari Beto. I think it actually is a pretty decent series. I'm actually, not that, it's, a, it's a Shonen Jump series I'm enjoying. And Shonen Sunday is starting to interest me. I'm starting to be more intrigued by their shit too. But that is all for me. This has been the Vlogs of Game from your boy Terrell, and I'll catch you guys later. If you've read it, put your thoughts. If you haven't read it and you read it after watching this video, come back and put your thoughts. And video responses are always welcome. You know, this is the channel I can throw out anything, so I don't mind responding to your responses or explaining anything you guys want to know about the series if you don't mind spoilers. But anyways, that's the first impressions, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. So I think I finally found my indie catchphrase. Yeah, boy.